Once the pieces are designed, it's now time to make a new file, which is an assembly where we will put all the parts together. So going to Inventor, go File, New. And now we're going to choose Standard.IAM, which is an Inventor assembly. So we're going to go Create. And we don't, we're not going to design any parts in here. We're just going to assemble the parts that have already been designed. It looks like it's taking a moment to load. So while it's loading, I'll go back to the model here. We can see that we have two of the plates. We have four bolts, four of the support pins. We have a center pin. And then we have this um, little disc here. It's not shown, but there's another one on the top as well um, that's not shown. And also what isn't shown in this view are the little nuts that go on the bottom. So we'll put all of those in into a single assembly. Going back to Inventor, now that I have the assembly um, window open, we can just start placing some things. The first thing I'm going to place are the um, end plates. And I'm going to place two of them. So I'm going to scroll out here, I'm going to click once, and then I'm just going to click again. And instead of clicking again, I'm going to right click and go OK. So now I have the two little plates here. First thing I like to do is ground one of them so it's not, it can't move it around. So if you right click on the plate and go grounded, select grounded, notice you get this little thumbtack showing and it's not moving anymore. And But this one does move we want it to be constrained in a certain way and so I can hit this constraint button and it brings up a window there's a couple different types of constraints that we're going to be doing here first I'm going to under the mate mate is highlighted but it gives you two options a mate and actually a flush flush is when two faces are flush with each other and that's really what I'm going to do I'm going to go flush I'm going to select this notice it gives me a little vector that is perpendicular or normal to this face and then I'm gonna click flush I'm gonna click here and then I'm gonna click up apply what that's done is ensured that these two are always at the same height or flush then I'm gonna click here and here and go apply and I'll close this window and you can see now the only way that I can move this other piece is back and forth I can't move it up and down and side to side because um, of the two constraints that I've made notice if I expand these end plates I get the two constraints that I made the flush and the flush one and the flush two notice it shows up twice one for each part because each part has that same constraint flush one where these top faces are flush and flush two where the side faces are flush I'm going to minimize these and now let's uh, place the support pins okay and so we have four of these support pins I'm gonna right click and go okay so I don't get any more and to place these I'm going to use a different constraint and that constraint that I'm going to use is the insert constraint and what I'm going to do is you kinda need to watch carefully I'm gonna zoom in and select this edge notice it gives me this circle here and a vector basically the insert constraint gives really two different constraints in one and then all I need to do is select this ed select this here and then I can go apply and I'm just going to do that again for each of the four apply to orbit we can go over here and give us a different view Again, select that edge here and select this edge here and then go here I mentioned a minute ago that the insert constraint really gives you two different constraints and to demonstrate that 
I'm going to show you those what two constraints I was talking about. So I'm going to close this and the fourth pin that we put in I'm going to delete the insert constraint. So I'm going to go right click and go delete. So now it's no longer constrained and I can move it around. Notice the other three I can't move around because they're locked in place. I can insert this using two constraints. One of them, if I hit C for constrain, I can actually, instead of using the insert, I can use the mate constraint. And if I select this, it gives me an axis. If I, so if I select the side of the cylinder, it gives me the center axis. And then if I zoom in and I select the side of this cylinder, not the edge and for the point, but the side of the cylinder that gives me the axis, and I click here, and go apply. Notice that this is now mated. Basically those two axes are mated. But I can still move this up and down. And so to keep from moving it up and down, what I need to do is use what's called a mate constraint again. But now we're going to mate two faces together. We're going to mate this face here. So I'm zooming in. And then I'm going to look down and I'm going to mate it to this face and then apply. So now this piece is inserted in using two different constraints. Basically the mate constraint that mates the two axes together and the mate constraint that mates the two faces together. However, I did the other three pins using the insert constraint which is really those two constraints in one. The next thing I want to do is make sure that this end plate is at the right spot. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go constrain and use one of the insert constraints here and go to this hole and now hit apply. And now the top doesn't move. Notice it's not grounded, it's just constrained to fit these parameters. Now, um, I want to show you something on the cube here. If you select the cube, you can orbit. If you select the orbit button, you can orbit. The shortcut to orbit, if you want to orbit um, as well from the keyboard, you can hit F4. Or you can hit the shift in the middle mouse. And so there's a lot of different ways to orbit. I typically use F4 and then left click to orbit when I need. But shift in middle mouse is also a really quick one. So um, also I want to show you this home button. If I click home, it gives me a view like this. But if I go to the assembly, it gives me a view like that. And so we can change our view. I'm going to orbit like this and then maybe select the corner of this cube. And that's kind of the view that I want for my home view, not the previous one when I click home here. And so to set a view, specific view as a home view, you can get it set the way you want and then right click on the cube and go set current view as home. And then you can just go fix to view. Then if I ever orbit and click the home button, it brings me back to this view. Okay. Um, the next thing that I like to do is set if I want to look at like the top, I want to set that as the top, not the front. And so if I right click on the cube again, I can go set current view as top. And it changes that to the top. And so now if I go home or here, if I click the top of the cube, I get this view. Okay, just a few more pieces to place. You'll get the four um, bolts here. and you can hit right click and hit OK. And so I'm going to hit constrain, use the insert constraint, select the bottom edge of the hexagon. If you can't select it here, what you can do is orbit. So you can see the bottom edge a little bit here. Select that and then insert it in there and go apply. And we will do that to each of these. Now um, I'm going to place the four nuts. Let's 
So we can go constrain, use the insert, select the circle here, go to the bottom, place the nut on, and place each of those. If you mess up, you can always just undo and make sure you place it in the right spot. Notice I'm just using the insert constraint. There are other ways to do this, but um, I'm not going to show every way to constrain these. I'm just showing one way. Now um, we only have two more parts. We have the center pin. So I'll place a center pin. And then we have the disc. So placing the center pin, we can hit constrain, hit the bottom edge there, and click there. And then finally, we're going to get the disc. And there are actually two of them. So go constrain or C for constrain. I'm going to go insert. I'm going to select this and click right here. You can see that's in place. And then we'll get the other one. Click this here. We can rotate this up. And then put that in place. Now notice that I can still turn this. We really don't want to turn these because these little support pins lock the disc in place. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to turn a little bit off like that and hit C for constrain and select the axis of the support pin and then select this axis here. And then um, sometimes you have to go aligned here, make sure that those are aligned, and then just hit OK. And we're going to do the same thing with the other disk here. Select this, select that, and go apply. If there is a problem, we may need to um, edit, and we may need to go like opposed or undirected. Basically um, what it's asking um, when we're using aligned, opposed, or under, undirected is when we actually select an axis it gives a direction. So when I hit constrain and highlight any cylinder notice that there is an arrow associated with it and if you notice here I can't really point to it with my finger but it's at the very top, it's right above the top of the hexagon, hexagon part of the bolt, it's actually pointed up. But if I select this, the actual arrow, it's, it's gray, is pointing down. And so when we constrain things together, there is an actual direction to the axis. And so when we choose aligned, it makes the two arrows from the two constraints pointing in the same direction. And so if you're having challenges getting things aligned like that, just choose undirected and it will be fine. But basically now, um, if I hit home, we have the entire assembly put together. And so you're going to want to save this. I'll go File, Save As, and we'll just save it as the fixture assembly.